So the polyvagal theory refers to that second branch of the parasympathetic nervous system. That branch has a lot of names. It can be called the social engagement system or just the vagus nerve. But the interesting part about that branch is where it runs and where it's located in our bodies. So as you can see here, the vagus nerve runs from the, the bottom of our brain stem right down through the front of our chest, into our belly, and then down each of our legs. And this is really important for us to understand because we've done so much talking about trauma and resilience being body experiences. When the vagus nerve is frozen or stuck, that's when we go into that state of collapse. That part of the chart that we referred to that said freeze, collapse, that feeling of I can't, right? I've come out of that middle area where I've been fighting or trying to run for so long and now I'm shifting to a place that I just can't do it anymore. I'm stuck. When we activate the vagus nerve that runs through the middle of our body, it clicks on that second branch, that social engagement system. So when the vagus nerve is stuck, we're in collapse. When it's activated, we have feelings of calm, contentedness, feeling like we're in the present, feeling like we, we belong and, and that we're safe. So in today's course, we're really going to talk about how do we engage that part of our parasympathetic nervous system that offers those feelings of calm, goodness, or belonging. It used to be that when we taught this course, we would just say things like, we have to really calm down our sympathetic nervous system. But now we know that there are certain ways to calm it down better than others because we certainly don't want it just to shut down. If you take a look at how the vagus nerve runs through the body, you can see that that vagus nerve is engaged through the back of the eyes, through the back of the nose, through the muscles of the inner ear, through the back of the throat. So what makes us feel safe? When we see people that make us feel safe or we hear, hear sounds of safety, right? We smell things that don't trigger danger. So you can see how if you see something or hear something or smell something that's overwhelming, that vagus nerve can say, oh my goodness, that's danger. I'm going to freeze up. I'm not going to be engaged. As we think about the polyvagal theory, I would like you to think about what we learned about the core regulation network. The core regulation network has to be engaged with in order for us to have new experiences in our body. So when we think about the core regulation network, we think of all the various parts that are connected to the places in our body. The ability to see things, to hear things, to smell things, to see different faces, to feel senses of touch. All of those things can be perceived as danger or as safety. What we know about working with traumatized children is that sometimes their experiences have only been rooted in fear, only been rooted in feeling not safe or like they don't belong or they're not connected. So part of what we have to think about as we're going around this circle is how to bridge that gap between the activated core regulation network by way of the, of, of the vagus nerve. So let's take a look at other places where the vagus nerve runs in our body. It's in our chest. It's in our belly. How do we feel when we feel feelings like overwhelm or loneliness or like we don't belong? Some people might say, I can feel it in my chest or I didn't do very well or I made somebody feel disappointed. I can feel like I got you know, kicked in the stomach or a punch in the gut. That's the feeling of our vagus nerve freezing up. How does our vagus nerve feel good is when we feel connected or like when we're not isolated or we did do well or we do feel like we're good at something. So we have to really 
engage the body and think about the body and the experiences we provide the body to both process the traumatic experiences that we've had and provide new experiences that we call experiences of resilience. And that's what we'll do as we go forward in the course today. Other things that really help to engage that vagus nerve in addition to human contact and feeling connected are things like mind-body skills. So when we think about breath work and mindfulness and slowing down that autonomic nervous system, those things are very helpful. When we think about movement or play or changes in our posture, it could be a yoga move or it could be a sport, it could be some recreational activity and how that engages the vagus nerve and makes us feel that sense of contentment, that sense of true calm. Just when we listen to music, when we hear the sound of somebody's voice that can be soothing. All of those sensory inputs are things that are activating the vagus nerve in new ways. So when we talk about the sensory experience, we're talking about the core central nervous system. Some people will say that trauma lives in our central nervous system, but that's also where resilience lives. And that's why we have to activate that portion of that parasympathetic nervous system in order to provide the kids that we work with new experiences of even knowing what that feels like. So we've spent the first part talking about the first part of the diagram. We've moved into talking about the polyvagal theory. And then through the rest of the course, we're going to move up the side as we begin to talk about resilience and sensory interventions.